Right, I've recently bought three um, new chucks for my lathes, uh, one two five millimeter diameter ones uh, made by Sano, and I've bought them now while the cost of them is so low. And I wanted the maximum size um, chuck for both lathes, um, so I've got this K72-125 Sanu chuck, which is a four-jaw independent chuck, and I've got one of those for the Myford lathe, and one for the um, Chinese mini lathe. And then for use on the Myford, I've got this new K12-125. Um, this is a four-jaw self-centering chuck. So this is the four jaw independent chuck for my um, Myford and like I say I've got one for the Chinese mini lathe um, so I don't have to keep taking this off of the Myford or off of the back plate and then um, putting it on the Chinese mini lathe. I've made up a back plate for the Chinese mini lathe and mounted it on that one. I've also converted my mini lathe one to uh, front uh, mounting bolts and if you only have the chance of getting one um, chuck, uh, four jaw chuck, always go for the four jaw independent rather than the four jaw self centering. And they used to say it in the old times, and I still say it today if you're only allowed one chuck out of two, a three jaw self centering and a four jaw independent chuck, just say you're only allowed one of those two. The four jaw chuck or the four jaw independent chuck is the one that I'd have. And that's because the four jaw independent chuck is the most versatile of all chucks. And not only that, it's the only um, chuck that you can guarantee to be able to get something running dead true on concentricity. Another great thing that I found out about these um, Chinese chucks is the actual chuck key. The square on the end here for the um, self-centering four jaw and the self-centering three jaw one two five millimeter chuck is ten millimeter square. The independent chuck um, has a, a chuck key with the end there that's seven millimeter square. So I bought some square mild steel in those sizes, 10mm and 7mm. And in a few minutes on a four jaw chuck you can make up um, this tool here. Just goes into the chuck end of the um, electronic screwdriver.
And then to finish off I use the um, old cordless screwdriver bear and a Loctite 638, put plenty of that in the hole and round the bear. Then insert that one into the hole. and then just press it home in the vise. And just check that it's gone in nice and straight and Loctite 638 goes off in a matter of minutes and it's absolutely um, solid stuff, it won't come out there again. Um, if the weather's cold you can actually just heat it up a little bit. And that makes the lock pipe go off even quicker. And that's the job done. And after machining and assembly, just take the corners off with a file off the edges of the square, just like on the um, chuck key, so that it can actually fit into the socket. If you don't do that, the 7mm and the 10mm square will not fit into that actual key socket. And then I just finish off by um, doing the end on a disc sander, so it's also similar to the actual chuck key. And then one can use it as a fast electronic chuck key. And if you use this method, always remember to start the um, jaw off with the chuck key so that you know that it's located and then you won't damage anything. So the chuck key bit for this four jaw independent chuck um, needs to be a minimum on this square end of 47 millimeter and that's because um, when you um, use it to undo the jaw or take the jaw out if you had it any shorter there um, then that would actually hit the end of the screwdriver And now I've changed over to the 10mm one. It's also great for cleaning the um, scroll because you can have it turning while you're blowing the um, swarf out. And the same with oiling up.
And again, if you use this method, it's most important that you actually start off the jaws with the chuck key. And as you've seen, it's very quick and easy to make up a set of these for all the chucks. And the cordless screwdrivers are so low cost, you can actually keep one readily available on each lathe.